Hello, my name is Tim Hirsch. I'm Deputy Director at GBIF, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. I'm going to take a few minutes to give you a basic introduction to GBIF, who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Hopefully it will give a bit of context to the rest of this training and motivate you to use the skills you'll be acquiring in this course to support GBIF's mission. So what is GBIF? Well, we're an intergovernmental network and research infrastructure with the overall purpose of providing anyone, anywhere, with free and open access to data about all types of life on Earth. GBIF was established in 2001, and it's a voluntary collaboration among governments and international organizations, the GBIF participants, working through a Common Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU. This MOU sets out the basic principles of sharing data for the common good and the way GBIF should be governed and funded. Under the MOU, each GBIF participant agrees to set up a node to coordinate data sharing and use among stakeholders in the country or organization. A secretariat based in Copenhagen, Denmark, manages the technical infrastructure and supports the collaborations that keep GBIF going and growing as a global community. As you'll see from the gbif.org homepage on the right, this community is now managing very large volumes of data, shared from hundreds of publishing institutions around the world, and used in a growing body of research to support understanding and decisions relating to biodiversity. One way to look at GBIF is as a window on the huge amount of evidence accumulated over centuries about where species have lived and when they lived there. The evidence takes many different forms and often starts out scattered, isolated and inaccessible. Here are some examples, and you can follow this if you look at the semicircle on the left, starting at the top and working anti-clockwise. Specimens, literally billions of them, collected from around the world, along with the labels that describe them, contain vital evidence which may be literally locked away in the drawers of natural history collections. Observations from surveys and monitoring programs, as well as the increasing activities of citizen scientists, are recorded and stored in varying formats. Literature about the natural world, both historic and current, often contains detailed information on species occurrences, but it's embedded and effectively hidden in the text. It needs liberating. Automated wildlife records, such as through satellite tracking, camera traps, or acoustic monitoring, add yet more to this wealth of evidence. And finally, large volumes of data derived from DNA sequencing of samples from the environment, so-called eDNA, provide evidence of previously hidden biodiversity. The key to discovering and applying all of this evidence is the use of common standards, a common language, if you like, that organizes all the essential facts according to an agreed vocabulary, even if they started out in a mess of different formats. That's one of the things you'll be learning much more about in this course. Once organized using agreed standards, datasets can be shared or published through GBIF, and using the technical infrastructure of the network, easily discovered by users through filtered searches plotted on maps, and used in models, always with clear links back to the original evidence. So we've brought all of this data together, but for what purpose? Through tracking the citations of GBIF in research and its onward relevance to policy and decisions, we can build up a picture of how all of those involved in sharing standardized data from the volunteer wildlife observer to researchers and museum curators are contributing to the knowledge that supports better decisions for our planet and for our societies. Here are just some examples. Data shared through GBIF supports conservation by helping to identify the most important sites for protected areas, by underpinning assessment of species extinction risk through the red listing process, and by tracking the actual and predicted spread of invasive alien species. Data shared through GBIF supports food security by mapping the distribution of the wild relatives of the most important food crops, 
and therefore the location of the genetic resources that need to be conserved for future plant breeding, and by providing information on both marine and freshwater fish species, along with other wild species important for nutrition. Data shared through GBIF supports action on climate change through helping to model how species ranges will change under different climate scenarios, informing strategies to adapt to climate change, and assessing the impacts of measures to mitigate climate change, for example, increased production of biofuels and hydropower. And finally, data shared through GBIF supports human health by tracking the distribution of species that act as vectors, hosts, and reservoirs of human diseases, by helping to map medicinal plant species, and by assessing risks posed by significant public health hazards, such as snake bites. GPIF provides technical solutions, but it is above all a global community. It's people collaborating to develop skills and good practices in the management, sharing and use of biodiversity data. This biodiversity informatics community of practice has, over the years, generated a variety of tools and guidance materials which are all freely available through the GBIF network, increasingly in multiple languages. At the heart of this collaboration is training through the use of curricula and e-learning, like the course you're following now. Another key feature is the use of our growing pool of volunteer mentors, experienced GBIF practitioners who help new colleagues to get started with advice and technical guidance. Today's trainees soon become tomorrow's mentors, and so the community of practice grows. GBIF's network of nodes helps develop these skills, both within a country's institutions and through collaboration at regional and global levels. Through a range of programs and partnerships, GBIF brings funding into projects that enhance biodiversity informatics capacity among countries and institutions. So, welcome to the GBIF community and good luck. If you have questions on this presentation, please use the forum provided in the e-learning platform. This video is part of a series of presentations used in the GBIF Biodiversity Data Mobilization course. The curriculum for this course was originally developed as part of the Biodiversity Information for Development program, the BID program, funded by the European Union. This presentation was created and narrated by me, Tim Hirsch.